My name is Corbin Murphy. I work for the Salem District BLM, Cascades Resource Area. We are snorkeling here on the Salmon River for uh, fish, juvenile, steelhead, coho, and uh, chinook. My name is Bruce Zolek. I'm a fishery biologist on the Cascade Resource Area in the Salem BLM. So fish snorkeling means you've got a dry suit on and a mask and a snorkel so you can see underwater and be in with the fish and we're counting the number of fish per square meter of river that we sample. And that way we get an estimate of the density of juvenile fish in the river. Yeah, so they're um, real small, most of them. Um, they're only an inch or two, uh, and there's big schools of them, um, 40, 60 fish. So it can be kind of challenging to try to count them all. Um, and then there's a few two-year-old steelhead that are maybe five, six inches, and occasionally we'll see a big resident trout um, and we had the good fortune of seeing a bunch of um, adult Chinook earlier today so that was pretty exciting. In 1964 there was a, a flood of about a hundred year once in a hundred year magnitude on the Salmon River and the response at that time was we need to get the water off the mountain faster so they took those bulldozers out in the river and they shoved all the wood and the boulders to the side so that the river was really simple and when it did that, it downcut a little bit and it abandoned connections to the floodplain into the side channels. And so we've been putting back in those log jams that run water out into the side channels and connecting up those side channels so they have flow in them year round. And coho in particular, that is part of their life history strategy is, is to rear in side channel habitats. It's important because we're doing some very state-of-the-art restoration on the Salmon River uh, with the partnership of the Sandy River Basin Partners and the Freshwater Trust. And we want to see what the response of the fish is to the habitat uh, restoration actions that we're putting in. So we're, every couple of years we look at how many fish are in the side channels that have been opened up. Our work is getting close to done. This has been a five-year project and we've built, just this summer we built eight main stem log jams and reconnected two-tenths of a mile long side channel and opened up a several off-channel habitats that we call alcoves that coho rear in in particular. And so we have one more year that we think we can um, put some log jams in and some, add some complexity to riffles by adding boulders to them in that two miles of restoration reach that we're working on. Well, that's interesting because it's, uh, it's not cheap to build log jams on rivers. It takes heavy equipment. It takes trained um, log jam designers. And so a lot of money is being spent on the Clackamas County rural economies. We're hiring construction crews. We hire Columbia Helicopter to fly in the logs to our project sites. We hire log jam designers um, to design the log jams. And so it's, it's a net return both in fish recovery and in putting some money into rural economies and local companies. You know, there's a, a lot of things people don't see uh, if you stay uh, in town or in the city. Um, and there's a lot of things that we have an effect on, as people, um, resource-wise, and it's important to think about where uh, you get your resources, you know, whether that be paper or wood, you know, building supplies uh, that comes from our forests. So it's real important. I want, you know, my kids to know the link between where their resources come from and what they're using at, at home.